It's Corner House Chronicles Day. Happy New Year, fellas. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. It's 2020. Have you messed up uh, writing the date yet? No, I haven't. Um, and it's because I read an article that said you can't just write 20 because somebody would like mess with it and add 17 or 18 or 19 they to could. the end of the 20 yeah. and mess with you. And I'm like, I don't know how it could happen, but I'm not going to make that mistake. So I've been pretty diligent in the three or four days so far. First five times I had to write it today. Nice. You messed up. <laughs> one <laughs> slash four slash one. Uh, it's going to be a thick slash. <laughs> <laughs> or just a funky slanted two. We'll work with it. I, I couldn't understand, though, what what exactly they would do. Like, let's say you sent a bill in, right, and you put 20 on it. Would they add 2019, like add the 19 to it and say you didn't mail it? Is that what it is? or In that nature, let's say um, I make a deal with you saying that in say 2000 whatever or in 30 days right you're going to give me $10,000 to pay back blah 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 okay and you write the date 1 4 20 20 right and i go huh 1 4 2018 i can take you to court okay and be like well this was 2 years ago and he still hasn't paid up i've been trying and there you go <laughs> So we know who not to do deals with. That's <laughs> hey. the moral of the story. That's why I don't lend out money. That's a horrible idea. Or I have a checkbook. <laughs> Dude, I saw a guy in Meyer yesterday had a checkbook in his hand, and I was like, kudos, bro. You're one of the dying few that still use a checkbook, you know? Analog, I see. Nice. Right? Analog. <laughs> it took me a while. I remember I kept a checkbook going for quite some time just because I was one of the few that had one, you know? But it just never wrote any checks or very rarely wrote any checks, but I'd keep my debit card. Right. Just like the same thing until the technology got so good. As soon as you swipe, it pops up on the app. And I'm like, yep. Don't need that. Right. Yeah. yeah the apps really changed everything because it's all right there in your hand. Now you don't even have to go to an ATM to find out your balance or nothing like that. You just first time I really, really liked, uh, found how advantage that is, is like, when you'd go to a store and you'd swipe your card and you'd pay and they'd be like, oh, it didn't go through. Or there'd be like an error and they're like, ah, I didn't charge you. And in the past, you'd be like, all right, and you'd have to pay again. Right. Mm -hmm. And check your bank statement. And make and sure it didn't yeah. double up. Remember, because it takes a week for gas stations to hit mm -hmm. and then check <laughs> and then go to them and then they wouldn't remember and you wouldn't keep your receipt. Then you have to go to your bank. Now you bring it up in your app. You're like, yeah, it didn't go through, eh? Right. What you? There it is. There it is. My bank's quicker than you are. <laughs> so I'll be uh, taking this soda. I'm out of here. A soda. I've been listening to Don Cherry's podcast. It's good. Oh, it's great. Especially since he got got the boot there a while back. Did, yeah. he, did he amp yeah. it up a little bit or what? It's just a ton of stories. Yeah. Just, he sits at the kitchen table with his son and drinks coffee and tells stories and talks about what's going on. So it's literally like you're hanging out with him. Yeah. That's cool. That would be so awesome. It, it is, because some of the stuff you'd be like, oh, I shouldn't say this, I get in trouble. Oh, well, here we go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is my podcast now. Yep. Who would you sit with if you could sit with one person and have coffee and listen to him tell stories? Do you, like, Is there one that jumps right out at you that you would be like, that guy or woman above all else? You know, See, may, you could go dead or alive, I guess, if you. I know we've had want to time travel conversations like Similar. this before. Yeah, like dinner party. I know we talked about uh, movies, like Quentin Tarantino talking to him about films, but he'd right. be way over our heads, quoting yes, all this would. stuff, and he would talk circles around me. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be similar to like Rogan. Like you would think he would be great to sit down and talk to, and in some some he would, but he's a great conversationalist. Mm -hmm. That pulls information because he's curious, and then when he sit with us, we're like, yeah, got like boring. I, yeah, if you, I imagine if you wanted to talk bow hunting, Joe Rogan would be a fun conversation to have because he's really into bow hunting or jujitsu or something like right, that. Yeah. You know, MMA. You would be like, oh shit, this is the guy. But <laughs> just for everyday DMT or, or <laughs> DMT <laughs> for everyday conversation or specific stories like a sports hero, 
Yeah. You know, like if you could sit and talk to Kurt Gibson, you know, and he could tell you stories from 84 or, or even, you know, coming up through Michigan State playing football and baseball and different things like that. Or, Man, that's a tough question. It is, right? It is. Yeah. Like one that you almost need a list, not just one, but you have Kinda, like a, a yeah. category like of Kev, people. Kevin yeah. Smith jumps to the forefront, but then you're like, man, all you do is listen to this podcast. He don't hold nothing back. Yeah, if he could guarantee to tell you a story he'd never told anybody before, maybe. Which then is that's like tough impossible. Because, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, you kind of get his whole whole story when you listen to his show. It would really deter- like depend on like genre. Someone from like a movie aspect or sports or... Yeah. And it would really suck if you got someone that's just not talkative. Yeah, just a quiet, like, shy person. You know, or you don't <laughs> yeah, click with, and you're like, man, I picked Tom Cruise to hear all about this stuff. <laughs> and all he's talking about is Scientology. That's it. I don't care if you're the savior of your people. Or, or, like, if, like, let's say the genie shows up, right? You rub the lamp, and he pops out, and he's like, I give you one wish, but it's to talk to somebody that you admire and without even thinking you said Phil Ivey. <laughs> Right, <laughs> he'd just stare at you for three hours having coffee, and you're like, he him, oh, go play shit. Blackjack. He's totally reading me right now." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he's like. No, I never did that. And you're right. like, "Whoa, what? You're bluffing. <laughs> that story's not real." I'm like, "Oh shit, he caught me." <laughs> Going down that avenue, someone like Doyle Brunson. That's who I was going to say first because I imagine That'd at his age he might not be that talkative, but if it's a one-on-one, oh, he's... maybe he would open up quite a bit. You know. Especially if you had some kind of deal with them where you're like, hey, I'm doing a podcast, I want your stories, blah, blah, blah. I mean, anybody in the poker world would be kind of cool. His would be more interesting because it was before, like, poker rooms. Yeah. Like, you would go in, like, the back of bars and do the traveling. Town to town. The original rounders. Right, right. Like, carrying a gun because I'm going to go play cards tonight. Mm -hmm. Shit. I've been playing a lot of poker lately. (laughs) It's been fun. Playing with a lot of old timers, too. Which I love that kind of game. It's just, you know, real talkative. Everybody's having a good time. They rabbit hunt every card. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me one, see that. I, the one time I went, I shut that down at my table. Man, oh, man. They're like, oh, let's rabbit hunt that. I was like, didn't pay for it. Right. I was like, ooh. But every other deal at the table, they got to see it, but not your deal. <laughs> or the one to my left or right. Oh, they didn't play along. They were like, no. oh, I just reached over and flipped the cards. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. It's fun, though. I miss playing on a regular basis like we used to when we had no responsibilities. You know, when that was it, Saturday night was poker. It was a good few years. No matter where we were, we had a different location, but we were playing. Sometimes it was Friday night into Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Well, because Michigan passed the bill, they're saying by Final Four, you should be able to sports back at, uh, go to the sports book at the casinos. Mm -hmm. Midsummer. Some of the bigger casinos should have apps. Okay. And depending on what deals they do um, and what what um, people they partner with or get approved by the state, there could be poker online in Michigan by the end of the year. Nice. I'm looking forward to just going to any bar where they have a lotto machine. Or and a you'll be able to, type, yeah, Like yeah. a keno type machine where you can just go and play and just place a bet right there. You know, much like scratch-offs. I don't think you'll be able to. You don't I think, think so? I uh, think it's just casinos, isn't it? Just casinos. They're going to get a sports book, and then they can create apps. So you probably because you got to be a phone. licensed. Yeah. How long before they just team with the state of Michigan Lotto, though? You know what I mean? Like, there's I, it, it'll, I would it'll, say it'll, there's the reach be would be a minimum. Of, I don't think they'll ever really do oh, that. Even if they get the upper hand what? in the deal, why uh, when they, when they get a hundred percent of the other? That's but the, the, what I'm saying, though, is the reach. If if I go to my local pub or, you know, whatever, it, it may be on the corner, and I don't go to the casinos downtown and I don't play on apps because I'm, you know, whatever age, people don't do apps, right? But I can go to the bar and I can place a bet on the Patriots to lose, you know, flick, flink, throw it in the casino machine. I'm just saying yeah. the possibility of reaching more people just for those casinos would be. I would say there would be if they ever do that. There would have to be a grace period of at least 10 years. There Ooh. would have to be incentive for the casinos to hold if, that. If they were going to do something like that, they'd have already done it. True. You know, well, Vegas this all just passed, though. Well, you, you look at the states at Vegas, New Jersey. Well, I've never been to Vegas. You might be able to do that kind of shit there. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what their laws are. Fair enough. 
probably not like that yeah. where you can just go to the bar and place a sports bet but I, I just why not why would you stop anywhere just take it all over if I'm them that's all I'm saying if I'm the casinos I want every avenue for income every person that I can reach that like I was saying don't use the apps or don't go to the casino at all yeah but then then not only is because there's what 23 casinos including the Indian casinos in Michigan, I believe it is. So it's in the ballpark. So then they're going to be splitting if if they were to partner with the state to do something like that. It isn't like a fifty fifty. It's like state gets fifty and I get a one twenty third of fifty. But it's still more income. You know, I mean yeah. that that income could pay or, the salary of the people that work at the casino, and now everything in the casino's profit. You know. Yeah, but with their own app, they're making a hundred percent of it. And if they, they if have the a app works app, out, absolutely. That's that's the revenue right there. Which the the bigger casinos like Should Michigan, Soaring Eagle, Greek Town. It was at Firekeepers. They're pretty big ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Firekeepers. Yeah, those those will probably be the standouts. Those little small casinos are fun sometimes. You know, it's all one floor, <laughs> and that's Rock, it. Paper scissors. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Casino war. Hollywood's kind of like that. I know they're a bigger name, but it's all one. No, there is two floors there, isn't there? I've never, never been, been there. there. Huh? Never been there. Hollywood? We went and played cards there. Did we? I yeah. thought we went to Firekeepers. No, no, you, no, no, no. You guys played a tournament there. Yeah. I'd rather drive to Toledo than Battle Creek, man. <laughs> it's like an hour and a half difference in a car. No, yeah, we went to Toledo and played at uh, Hollywood for that poker tournament. Oh, that's right. That, it was a rebuy, <laughs> and we didn't know it until we got there. Yes, I busted the first hand after the rebuy. Dude, I, <laughs> I remember, I'm sure yeah. I told you, but yeah. I busted the hand before the break so I could rebuy because he was still in. And then the next hand after we start, he goes walking by, and I'm <laughs> like, dude, I got all these chips here, man. You can, <laughs> damn it. Hit a three-outer. What can you do? <laughs> yeah. Two-outer because I, I had the flush covered. I was uh, playing last Monday at the, the spot where I go play here locally, and I had Queen-10. I I my first five hands I had pocket pairs and I lose. Right, so I'm down in chips and it's a quick tournament, you know, it goes quick. So I get queen ten, I shove it all in, the guy calls me with uh ace five suited, flop comes down three, four, ten, uh <laughs> turn cards a ten, and he thought it was the river and he's like, Oh, you won on trip tens and he starts shoving the pot and I'm like, There's a, still a card to come and it's gonna be a deuce and he looks down and he looks over at me, he's like, No, burn deuce and he hits the straight i was like i told you man you were gonna beat me (laughs) it sucked but you can't get mad about that right because you call it you're like i see i'm gonna lose to this one card yeah how many deuces are in the deck right now two yeah you're gonna hit it i know you're gonna hit it it just seems right especially when he declared me the winner on the turn i'm like i can't take the chips (laughs) the whole table's watching (laughs) right (laughs) Just fold your cards. Yeah, just, just fold uh, yeah, your right. Cards. If you want to fold now, hey man, different that's story. Different, yeah, right. Yeah. Absolutely. I know it wouldn't. Have, it wouldn't have went through, but no, no. it's fun to joke about. He kept looking at me for like the next ten minutes too, because I'm standing over watching everybody else play. He just look and smile. Like, sure. <laughs> that's when you're like, you better win. I know, right? You better win. He ended up chopping four ways. For uh, I think it was like 115 each. I don't know why, but it always makes it feel better. Mm-hmm. Like whoever takes you out, if they win, but like, yeah, at least the you know, eh, guy who won it. That My chips went to the winner, yeah. right? I reckon I have a different mentality. <laughs> Bust that motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> take him out now. You know you what? That's what you want, right? Yeah. So uh, like, if I took you out in the tournament, you would root against me until the very end. Oh yeah. If if it's a home game tournament, oh yeah, right. If you're out in the wild. No, if we're no, in the we're, casino and no, we're the two. No, no. You know, no. Right. Then that's it's, like, un- right. it's also unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't I'm deal sure. in what ifs. <laughs> I did pretty good that one time me and him went. Yeah. I took second that time. I did not do well. It was like a $75 buy-in, too. Yeah. It was big time. It was a good game, but this... Uh, For us back then. Right. We're, we're like playing five, ten games, and mm-hmm. we're like, oh, let's go to the casino. Oh, $75. Okay, yeah, we can do this. A little outside our budget, but why not? Yeah, I got think I got beat by like a lady in her sixties who was just like, "Oh, how many chips?" And like just every it was hand. Phyllis. I call it's all for fun, anyways. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Damn it! Read your soul. Yep. Right. You're just like, huh? That hurts. Everyone else at the table's like, "Man, that sucks." It's like, 
All right. What are you going to do? What can you do? Go hit a slot machine for a couple minutes. <laughs> then John's like, yeah, I'm doing great. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I got to go find something to do. <laughs> I did, too. Can I get that free hot dog voucher? Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, baby. I think we were there long enough to get two of them that you day. Did. <laughs> you got two. I only got one. Like, holy shit, let me get that second hot dog on the way out. Kept coming back at the breaks, like, how you doing? Like, hoping, like, all right, maybe we can go soon. Oh, dude, I'm fucking killing this table. It's my table. (laughs) It's like, awesome. I'm glad you're doing great, but I want to go take a nap somewhere. (laughs) Been here for four hours and not playing. Since we're on the subject of poker, uh, isn't it weird to watch or think about the stages we went through? Just us playing, but then the surroundings, like the poker rooms, the online, the different ways that we outlet, uh, or I'm sorry, outletted our poker fix. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. playing together, we had a home game every month, sometimes twice, three times a month we were playing. When we first started, it was every night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then with that, remember we went to that Mustang that one time? We become all these fucking strangers. You know what I mean? We thought they were like, man, these guys are good. These guys are solid. Yahoo Groups. Yeah. Yahoo yeah. Group stumbled upon it and was like, hey, there's a tournament. You guys want to go? Right. That was crazy. And then, like, all of a sudden, our bowling alley had a poker room. Like, what? When did this happen? Holy yeah. shit. Now I'm in there three times a night just, you know, walking through all the way through the alley <laughs> to get to the poker room. Then the walk of shame back to the car. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no hot dog voucher this time. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. The little bit, uh, little bit of experience we had in the casinos. You know, here, Canada, different places. I always liked playing in Canada. They had a good poker room. Yeah. When we first started going. It was just, that's a bit of a trip. Yeah, but we always stayed the night. That was also nice. I didn't. <laughs> it was really nice if you stayed the yeah. night. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I don't remember ever staying. I didn't really go play at Casino Windsor much, but... uh I think I went a couple times with with Sean, like more recently, you know. Mm. I'd say the funnest was probably our home game that we did because that was always cool. We counted on it. Everybody showed up. We all had a good time. Man, we were running twenty to thirty people in there monthly. Seat changes, chip up, payouts were cool. The points were real tight because we had so many people. You know, you had had the casino program running with the timer and the blinds, but. Full tilt poker was so much fun when we were all active and playing, playing and it, yeah. you know, like the, at any given moment, at any night, you could we could call each other and be like, "Yeah, I'm running three sit and goes right now. Mm-hmm. Look me up. You search them, doom doom doom. You know, and I'm watching you. I'm playing in different cash tables. <clears throat> I think just the access of playing multiple tables at at one time was just so much fun for me. Addicting is all hell. You know, yeah, like dangerously addicting. Dangerously, you know. Yeah, we I still haven't found anything that has drained me mentally like poker did when you would do like long sessions. Mm-hmm. And like I kind of chase that with every like new hobby I pick up. I'm like ah, no, it doesn't do it. And you're even playing hero clicks for forty eight hours. Like I still don't feel that nope. ace high flush on the river. Nothing. You know, magic was probably the, the closest, closest, but it was like a quarter of the feeling. Uh, Magic? No, I didn't get into that, so uh, I don't, I don't know that. But uh, I'll cool, take your word on it. <laughs> yeah. The coolest thing playing on like online full tilt for me was like the free sit and goes mm-hmm. to try to step up to the big tournaments. Yep, I did that four times and made it to the big Sunday once a month tournament. Oh, I really enjoyed that the pros were mixed in. And that you could tell because they're avatars. Whether it was them playing on the other end of the computer or not, uh, whatever. But it could have been, mm. which was cool. And then if you'd bust one in a tournament, you got a shirt, you know, a little, a little care package or whatever. Bragging rights. Yeah, those were the golden days. That was kind of the the step up too, because when we had our monthly game, we kept track of knockouts and different things, points yeah. and stuff. But when you started playing online. And it would, what was that site where it was like um the tracker? Yeah, where it kept track of all your play everywhere. Stat Do you remember what that was? Poker tracker? Is that what it was called? Okay. Or hold'em tracker? I think it was poker tracker. I thought yeah. it was a like pocket pair or something. No, that website was uh pocket eight or the ranking website. 
Pocket Fives. Pocket Fives. Th- that's what I'm thinking yeah. of. Yeah, where it would rank oh, you yeah, amongst yeah, yeah. all the online players, and, and you're like, it oh, I'm number three. We'd all go in there, thousand. register our names, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we'd see our our highest it would rank caches. you by country, mm-hmm. state, all that. We'd we'd always have to sort down to Michigan. Yeah, and right. then there was like one pro in Michigan that was always at the top. I wonder if that was the. Uh, well, there was a group of them that came out of Lansing. Yeah, but I mean, I like made online, some noise. there was we we were always like always close to the top ten. Mm-hmm. We were in the twenties, and fluctuating up. Close. You might have been. I was never that high on oh. poker. <laughs> I, I had would, one really good cash online, and it put me up. I was gonna say I played online poker like you played live poker, where it's either, I'm going big, and I'm either gonna get a bunch <laughs> of chips early, and I'm gonna hold up, or I'm gonna be out. <clears throat> Everyone has their play style. Yeah. If you're not throwing a bunch of chips around because you got them, what's the point of having them? I remember the first time I cashed out four figures on there. That was amazing. It's a good feeling. Yeah. Stay up for like nine, ten hours playing in one tournament, or if you grind a cash table that long, yeah. you know. <laughs> Look outside and be like, oh, sun's out. Shit. What time is it? Yep, going to work in a couple hours. Right. Yeah. And while you're there, all you think about is going home and playing play poker, poker online. Like, I should go home and sleep. Mm-hmm. I might play sit and go. Or two. Yeah, I might get like an hour on a cash table, double my buy-in. Do you regret not studying, not learning the game, the the numbers, the, the stats, the, the odds, the um, situational stuff, like a lot of obviously pros do where they put in that time and they were yeah. able to make that a career? I regret not doing it more than I did. Yes, absolutely. Because we thought we did it a lot. At least I thought I did it a lot. You until, did it a lot. You did do yeah. it a lot. But yeah. Man, then you, you tend the to problem go. is you were the only one doing it, so you had none of us to talk to about those angles because we didn't really know what you were. And then you would have to teach us. Right. So you could talk to us about it. Right. <laughs> you're like, no, 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 no. You have a 33.2% chance right. on the flop if mm-hmm. this. And you're like, oh, okay. And then you'd look at us like, why don't you care more? But man, then you like I've watched some of the documentaries or interviews with some of the grinders, like even from those days to now. Sleeping on people's couches and that's all they do and is just study. They the game. they'd play for six hours and then they would study hands for another eight hours. They had like fourteen, eighteen mm-hmm. hour days. They'd meet up with other poker players and like talk every oh, hand man. out. I think looking back on it now, the way I think about it now is maybe I didn't see their winnings as high. So I didn't value what they were doing. Right. You know, we mainly heard like through ESPN and that there wasn't a big outlet. Yeah, no, Moneymaker was us. Yeah. He he was us. He played in a home game. He won a, a couple of buy-ins up, and then boom, he won the fucking main event. We're all like, we, we could do that. Because yeah. we started our league what, what, one year before he won it. Yeah. 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 It was, no, it was the year he won. Because I think we, we started in January. Yeah. He won in June or whatever. This was before the November 9. Right. So. Yeah. And then Raymer, right after awesome that, man, and we baby. were like, "Dude, we could do this. Like, we could." These totally. are average people, but we were having fun because it was a home game. Mm-hmm. You know, like yep. if we would have spent all that time playing home game poker in casinos, kind of learning the grind. Yeah, it would have been a different. story. It would have been a totally different story, and I kind of regret not doing it like that. But financially, it wasn't really a main. Twenty five bucks a month was a lot better than a couple yeah. hundred a week or a day. Yeah, whatever. Depending you know, on the swings the cost of your uh, education in that field, <laughs> right? No FAFSA for that one. Which is what was so dangerous about online poker because if you had a credit card and you could be like, yeah, I'll put 200 on, you know, because it's a credit card. I'll pay 30 bucks a month for the next three, four months until it's paid off. And Week later, you're like, goes shit. quick, here's another 200 on the credit, you know. Like, then you're like, why did I get in a $70 tournament? I don't know why. Yeah, because my bankroll said two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be fine. It's fire enough of three more of those five dollars sitting goes. Or you play in the algorithms of the dollar tournament, just swing in your favor, and you're like, I'll play for twenty, and the algorithm goes the other way, and you're like, man, I missed all those hands so bad. I still remember because I'd, I'd keep the bankroll and I'd follow that strict. You know, you gotta have if it, limit However many times so many the, buy-ins, yeah. no limit, so many buy-ins, and I'd be grinding nickel dime, just get up to dime quarter. And then it'd always be these messages. You send me ten bucks. You send me ten bucks. Can I get ten bucks? Yeah. It wasn't bad if it was like one person, but right. I had like eight people doing that. Yeah. 
Like I'd grind and have a great day on five five cent ten cents, which you know that's a ten dollar buy, and yeah. I make like seventy five bucks, and I'm like, man, I'm down five bucks. <laughs> How did that happen? <sighs> I still remember the time I, I thought I got locked out of my account. Someone hijacked my account. <laughs> that was me. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was over Aaron's at his apartment, and he's like, I can't get on. I'm like, what do you mean you can't get on? He's like, I can't get on. And so I hopped on, and I was like, you are on. Yeah. And we're like, fuck, how do we contact them? Man, I was on the phone with full tilt and shit and everything going on. And then finally got your message. You're like, yeah, I just logged in instead of having you transfer me over money. I'm like, oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> you got to let me know this. I know. This was like early cell phone day too, so we, it wasn't like we had constant contact no, with no, each no. other like we do now. No, you know? like each word was like eighteen buttons, <laughs> and you had to like log on to Full Tilt and then go into the poker room I was in and then message me in, in the, the chat room. John, read this message right now. <laughs> like, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing? We definitely played. Well, I definitely played all that whole situation wrong. You know what I mean? As far as like learning and. Now when I play online poker, you can kind of see the way the hands are going to fall, the cards that are going to come. Maybe it's just me and I'm reading too much into it, but it like algorithms, it feels like I can see it happening. You know, like you fold a certain hand and then the next couple of hands roll in your favor. And I don't know. Not You're like I'm a winning player or anything. Looking for patterns, you'll find a pattern. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the one place I constantly look for patterns because I'm like, I never really trusted it, but I did want to. You know, oh, if yeah. that's kind of weird to say. Especially after the whole full tilt, like... Exam. Oh, after that, yeah. yeah. All Well, their thing wasn't... Like Algorithm, yeah, it, it was just stealing money. Yeah, that was just straight on the back ends. They, they didn't but at the same money. time, there were so many videos out of other sites that were... They could monitor your hands, or they had a person, a bot, playing or something. You know, yeah. there's like a lot of... Uh, Shifty things. Yeah, dark clouds following the whole, the whole system. So, I still try... Well, I was. I've been trying to get on the site that I was playing on and won't let me, so maybe maybe they got in trouble. <laughs> maybe. 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 So what's new? Well, I found an uh, interesting YouTube channel last oh, yeah? night. It was a uh, slow day at work, and okay. a uh, work buddy of mine sent me a go check this out type thing for YouTube. And his uh, channel is Badlands Chugs. Okay. So before you say that, what do you envision? For what he just said? Yeah. yeah. Badland uh, Chugs, right? Badlands Chugs. Chugs. People chugging beer in the desert. Maybe keg stands, something like that. No. Man, I'm picturing like, I don't know, like a, like a biker or something. Someone mm-hmm. like, like a gym, gym to anvil. Okay. Beard. Something like that, All right. and I mean with chugs, it's like you eat maybe not beer, maybe just random stuff. All right, you ready? Yeah. So it's this gentleman. Uh, I've only watched two of his videos. He has five point three million followers, which good for him. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Make it some money. A larger guy, and he just chugs things. Does, like, he, does he have the beard? No, he has a very trimmed goatee. Nothing, okay. Not Jim the Anvil Nightheart. So he just chugs things like random shit? Well, not so much random, but uh, the first video I seen, because it caught my eye, was uh, eggnog. Oh. Oh, Ooh. baby. Yeah. So I went, okay, I want to oh, see. Oh, baby. And the words before eggnog was one gallon. Oh. So he had two of the glass boots. Das boot. Uh-huh. And four... Little bottles of eggnog. Two bottles filled each boot. He chugged both boots. Oh, my God. 58 seconds of oh. eggnog. How? How long was the video? Uh, like two minutes. Oh, so there was enough ample time after to see if he upchucked? No, there was ample time before leading up. Ah. He did his little sponsor bit. So he don't show the vomit. He does not show the vomit. because <laughs> okay. There's no That's way. That's for Patreon members. No, <laughs> right, right. Because there is no way drinking that much eggnog that quickly that it does not shoot back up. I've Dude. seen the milk gallon milk challenge. Right. Can't do it. One cup of eggnog is all I can do. A half a cup is tough to get through. That shit is thick. 
Oh, I love it, though. Oh, yeah. It's good for one cup. That's what I'm saying. After that, and it's got to be like Christmas morning or Christmas Eve or something. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I got to be in a mindset for eggnog. Uh, oh. oh, man. I was impressed. The other video I watched of his, see, uh, walking through the grocery store, you see the big jugs of high C. Yeah. Okay. He knocked out one of those in less than a minute. Put it back on the shelf and walked out like. Well, he was in his his house, but was there any spillage in the videos? A little leakage on the side of the. Okay, leakage, no. But I'm talking like, was he straight arming it or is he Steve Weisering it? Oh no 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 no! He like (laughs) (laughs) he did not slam two of them together and pours out like you did drink it. it. So he cracks it and then he has like this little breathing thing he does and like, and then bam, he just straight down. And he'll stop to like catch a breath and, go, and boom, back in. Did you pay attention? Was he slamming on the 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 exhale or the inhale? I want to say that he would like exhales and then boom starts. Okay, I don't know. Gonna give this a shot, are we? No, no. I was just curious if <laughs> I'll he was get you taking that that deep breath with the drink, or if he, you know, take the drink without and then breathe after. I don't know. Yeah, well, we can just look the video up, right? Yeah, I can. It be, might be a little bit better. Do you want to watch the eggnog one? Uh, I don't know. Well, there's no vomit, so I guess it's it's just him drinking eggnog. It's not a big deal. It's. I was more curious if he like, was, ugh. you know, like chugging it like that, or if he was like, um, like, well, he stri- a, like straight arming, or or do a funnel or something. No, he uh, did a New Year's sparkling cider triple barrel chug, where he takes three bottles of sparkling cider and knocks them out all at the same time. Mm. I mean. Kudos Wait, to this gentleman. Three bottles in his face at the same time, or one, two, three? He takes two, clangs them together. Three at the same time. Yeah, I saw, you know, before it went to the ad there. I love Facebook or YouTube ads. <laughs> Sorry, Zuck. <laughs> Whatever app I'm on. Then you got to. Oh. We had a f- podcast for one. Uh, yeah, it's for you guys. Oh, wow. So he's a large dude. Yeah, he's a big gentleman. Okay. So this but he's probably, taking three bottles of sparkling cider in his hands, his gullet or gullet. There we go. Oh my and, goodness! Look at that, dude. Yeah. So is it more impressive that he killed all three bottles or that he got all three bottle heads in his mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm saying that's fifty fifty. I mean, they were equally impressive. I would say it's more impressive that he took all the liquid down at the same time. Myself, that's. Without spilling it all over his shirt yeah, and the floor, you know, there's no cleanup there. At most, he has a little bit like off the side corner of his mouth, and it's the oh. eggnog one. I was just like, I wanted to throw up for him. Yeah, watching it. That's. But then I realized this is how this man makes his money these days. So five million people are signed up to watch this guy just chug things. Pretty sure it was five million. Let me let me That's double check. How many for views on that video? Uh, this one has thirty four thousand. Okay. All right, so he has one. Five million followers. They followed him. They're like, I'm not watching him choke anymore. I'm sorry, it's 1.3 million. My math was completely off by about four. It's still 1.3 million followers. There's nothing to shake a stick at there. Oh, no, not at all. 34,000 views. Yeah, I get what you're saying there. Yeah, the percentage of people that actually are active watching. So he's not making money off those videos. He might be. You don't make money off followers on YouTube. You make money off views, right? You got to get a million before you start making any money. Is this uh, the hundred thousands oh, no, okay, where it's you start getting decent to where it's oh a hundred thousand? Yeah, oh, okay, hundred thousand views. I mean, it's not like quit your day job, right? But it's right. You know, it's not nice pennies. to have some money coming in. It's like a, a check for thirteen dollars or something. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. That's a lot of high C right there. Holy cow. I will say this. High C is, like, syrupy. Yeah. Like, I usually cut with water just to get it, like, drinkable. And he's taken down. You mm. cut it with water? Yeah, I really do. That's un-American. It's too sweet. Water or ice? Water. Oh. But not a lot. I'll just put, like, a little bit in. Okay. And mix it. Like 80-20? Yeah. Okay. Shit, you might as well do, like, 80-10 and then throw 10 in vodka in there and... You know, spice your night up a little bit. There were times. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely, definitely go with the vodka. Like, don't mix it with Jack. Oh well, I mean, goodness, dude, whatever you got it. Yeah, sometimes it's just Jack and Kool Aid. What is it? Badlands Booker? What? Something? Tea. Shock. 
mayhem. He got all kinds of words on his screen when it went there. Yeah, Badlands Chugs. He's got, oh, wow, two liter of uh, root beer and Mentos. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, because he was drinking that stuff slow. That has two million views. Yeah. His insides are going to be pissed. That's just you open your mouth and it's just rocketing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the eggnog one, like, knocked me on my ass because I was like, how do you do that? That's gross. But you know how when you start watching YouTube, you fall into a rabbit hole. Oh, yeah. I eventually made it to a video of a man chugging 150 raw eggs. Oh, gross. Yeah. I, what compels you to, like, push the limits? Like, if you can chug a YouTube. beer. <laughs> yeah, YouTube. That's what's fame. compelling which, these people. Which is, like, what Facebook and Instagram with their videos now. Like, yeah. I've never watched videos on Facebook, but one one of the nights I got home, I was looking at something and someone shared a video or something and I, I guess I hit it. I was trying to scroll and I hit it and then I got into the, like the little video, video feed chat yeah, and or, I was yeah, trying chat, to continue but... scrolling and all of a sudden I'm scrolling the videos and then no matter what, when you just one swipe, you'll find one video you're like, wait a minute, right, okay. I, before yeah. I get out of here, I'll watch that right. one. And then when that one ends, <laughs> so I, it, yeah, it just, oh, hey, there's one under it because you can just see the title yep, of it yep. and it just sucks you in three hours later. I'm like. I didn't even need to watch those. You're watching, like, aborigine people building their own swimming pool around a hut in the middle of the jungle with a camera. No, <laughs> like, I, I might I, need to know this. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I was like, man. Those rabbit holes can be can be fun. They can. Not so Until much Until you realize that you got to be up in three hours, right, and you should right. probably go to bed. That's where it's dangerous. Yeah, that's where it hurts. The YouTube rabbit hole is like the new online poker in my world. It's dangerous. I get sucked in like a tractor beam. What if you had a YouTube show about getting sucked into YouTube rabbit hole? And it was just you commenting on videos that you kept just like chain watching. Like, oh. That's got to already be a thing, right? Yeah. That, that I mean, has that to has to be a thing already. You would think. I would think. I'm not going to look it up because we don't have that kind of time for this show. I no. mean, isn't that what reaction videos are? So you, you, that, yeah, yeah, that's okay. pretty much So that, you would just have to outdo all the other reaction videos? A reaction video to a reaction video that's doing a reaction to... I mean, you just got to keep, <laughs> like, inception this thing. So what's the last... I mean, other than that one, because that's the one you, were, you just found. What's yeah. the last channel you found that you were like, man, this is a really cool concept? Ooh. Channel? Yeah, where you'd watch a video, and it was compelling enough for you to go to their channel and look at a couple other videos. Oh, man, what's his name? It's uh, it's a group of guys in Australia. They're like, the, they prank each other. Oh, think, the brothers uh, or whatever, yeah. Shammy, I think his name is. Okay. And I found him through the Hamby Gang, which I believe he's in Europe. But it's just a bunch of people who prank each other and do a bunch of shit. But I've, I've followed their pages and their channels because of their videos. That shit's hilarious to me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking up the name of the... You're looking up one now? The channel. Because I can't remember the name. Uh, what's his name? Chugs? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said not that one. I know. Just looking. What about you? Internet historian. <laughs> because of that one video. Because <laughs> I, I watch a lot of stuff on Twitch. Okay. One of the guys, like what the best Twitch uh, first-person shooter, Shroud. Okay. So I'll watch him occasionally. I suck at first-person shooter games, but Jason's got me on Call of Duty Mobile now. But anyways, so I, I watch watch his just because he's he's fun to watch. He's like very humble, but he is like the best of best. And sometimes when he ends the stream, he'll let people submit videos and he'll watch videos with them or why he's eating and different things. And he watched one on the internet historian, and it's like he tells something. Some some part of history or an event, but it the way he does it, it's just hilarious. Like he did um, the Fallout one was amazing because that's the one you sent me. The Fallout one is it like drunk history? No, 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 no. no. Okay, no, I, I don't know how to describe it other than it is just hilarious. So he just sits around and talks about the history of the internet. Is that what I'm getting? No, like no, he'll no. pick the what's uh the flag? Who who is the Shiloh Booth? Shiloh LaBeouf. He did. Remember when he did the he flag? Oh, the four chan thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he did like a four part series talking about how four chan found it and oh, making fun okay, of it. And it's, okay, okay, okay. But 
I'll, I'll send it just to you. Just an in-depth history of something that took place of the internet. Gotcha. But with a bunch of funny, just oh, it's hilarious. One-liners. He'll add little um, okay visuals. <laughs> so like he he's overlaying like shit on the the, the videos yeah. and stuff. Okay, oh, like yeah. graphics and things. Okay. But he's just walking you through the timeline of right. each event with like little funny jabs and stories about. Okay. It's really like what well, that uh, Fallout one was like a twenty something minute video. Okay. Oh yeah, he puts time into. Oh this. yeah. See, it reminds me of that TV show Drunk History, where it's ki- kind of people just getting drunk and talking about real things that happened in history, mm-hmm. but they're you know putting their little funny drunk twist on it. Yeah. Yeah, he did the Fallout because the Fallout seventy six game came Ooh. out and they. They, they sold it, and it was only like 25% done. Yeah. It had a bunch of glitches and stuff. <laughs> and so he's like making fun of it. and sh- oh, it's just Showing clips of the, some of the glitches. Like uh, one of the things that in the environment that can come kill you, like freaks out, then goes under the ground. Oh. But it's still in front of you, hitting you somehow, but you can't hit it because right. it's under the ground. The guy's like, how the fuck are you supposed to win at this? Remember the old wrestling game that we used to play where it would glitch when you jumped off the top, top rope, rope and your character would, would hang kind of and there. vibrate? In the, in the, <laughs> but, you know, like your character was on the ground right. and it would get pummeled, but the character's still up here just... <laughs> And then you would lose sight because you can still walk right. around, but your <laughs> icon's up there. Oh, yeah. Or the glitch that really gets me in video games is when your power bar will disappear. You know, like if it's a fighting game and your shit will disappear, and you're like, whoa, I don't know how much power I got, you know. I don't think I've had that happen. No? No. I always hate it when you got stuck in, like, in between walls or like in yeah. mid-jump. Yeah. And you can't move because it has to finish that action before you do anything, and you're just like. Well, Didn't that happen in Golden? Was it Golden Eye? It like one of the boards them. you would get in a corner or something, and all of a sudden your character would like elevator halfway up the floor, yeah. you know, and you were stuck. So uh, one channel that was uh, sent to me a while ago by my friend, it's called Todd in the Shadows. And uh, this dude named Todd does videos of like he's in the shadows of his apartment, but he talks about different uh, music things. Like one is a... Uh, he has a bunch of stupid shit on here. <laughs> I know I get excited, like, yeah, I found the channel, and then I have to like go through and like find uh but he'll talk about like one hit wonders and like break down their song. What came before them, what came after, what was going on. He'll just give a real in depth look at something that you wouldn't have given two seconds to, and it's always interesting and you learn a lot about the music industry processes. Like, just a really interesting channel. I think there was, I don't know if it's a com, like a channel or not, but there was a, a page on Facebook who would post, um, like, interesting facts from old movies, you know, that you might not have noticed. Mm. Almost like the old VH1. Something like that. Yeah, like a pop-up vi- pop pop video. Pop yeah. video. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, uh, you remember the movie Liar Liar? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So at, at the, the end, end when yeah. Jim Carrey, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you both know. We've For the listener, the, at the end of the movie when Jim Carrey is being wheeled on a stretcher over to the ambulance after crashing at the airport, blah, 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 he, you can see in the background Fire Marshal Bill is one of the firemen yeah. uh, in the crowd control. Never noticed it before. Me and somebody pointed it out on Facebook. And my immediate thought is, how much free time does this person have to find that through. and you know to see it? Or was it just one of those moments where you're just like, hey. Oh, my God, hit pause. Hey, hold on. Rewind that. You know? It got me thinking, when was the last time I had one of those moments? Where you found something and you were just like, really? And it was during The Office. Funny enough. (laughs) There's so much hidden stuff in The Office. It's It's great. uh, Creed Bratton, who I still find fantastic that his real name Name is is Creed Creed Bratton. Bratton. That's amazing that he got that in the show, right? Well, Phyllis' real name uh, is Phyllis. Isn't it? The majority of them have their real name. Really? Yeah. I, d- I don't know. Uh, but there was... Who, who's the boss? Tony Danza? Yeah. He had his name was Tony in the show because he didn't want to get confused or something like that. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, but Creed, <laughs> the day they bring the daughters, bring your daughter to work day, yeah. when he's like, anybody seen a foot with four toes? And Michael Scott's like, whoa, 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 stop. And if you pay attention, Creed goes, what? Hair covers most of it. <laughs> <laughs> But he slides it in so quietly and smooth, and I caught it the one time I was watching. I'm like, what did he just say? Oh. Oh, me. 
2020. New year, new me. You heard that one yet? <laughs> Has anybody said it in your presence? <clears throat> no. no. No? I've never heard anyone say that. Besides me just now? Just now. Yeah. I know it's a thing, and I've seen it like Facebook updates. And, oh, yeah. But I've never heard anyone We're, actually say People it. are like, I'm going to cancel Seriously. all the negative energy out of my life. <laughs> <laughs> You could have done that three days before New Year's. Get yeah, out you of do here. that any day. Right. I will tell you this, though. I am so dumb. I went to return empties the day after New Year's Day mm. at the store. Ooh. Wasn't even thinking. Ooh. Wasn't even thinking about what day of the, the yeah. you know, year it is or anything like that. I just We were going to the store to get some groceries. I put them all in the car. It made sense. Walk in the bottle return room, and I was like, you saw that oh line. You had flashbacks to waiting goodness. for, like, yes. PlayStation releases or <laughs> Dude, tickets. concert tickets, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Like, are we doing a raffle you know, just like, like Ticketmaster? Uh, there was so many people waiting to return empties, and I just was like, why is it so damn busy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that fourteen-year-old kid has to come by and empty the bins and reset the machine. Dude, I was having a conversation with a guy in the bottle return room about how they have so there's like ten machines that take planning uh, plastic. plastic and, and uh, cans, right? Yeah, and then, and then there's two, two bottle ones that do bottles, right? Half of them don't work. It's true. Or they're now down. when we were younger and we worked at a local grocery store, we'll say Farmer Jack. They're not around anymore. It's not a big deal. They didn't have bottle return machines, right? We had to hand count that shit, remember? Yeah. I was telling the guy, I'm like, don't you think it'd be quicker to pay somebody to stand here and hand count into empty Gaylords of uh, bottle returns than it would be to pay two or three people to maintain all these machines every day? You know? Like, it just, it was a great idea, and now it's not. I remember when they first showed up. Yeah. And then we had to clean them, and they're just they're disgusting, sticky all over. Right, nothing's working because they're the first ones, mm-hmm. and like the belts are just oh, nothing but syrup spinning. I tried to tell the guy. It's funny because I was talking to the guy behind me, but I was saying it loud enough for the woman at the nearest machine to hear me because she had all plastic bottles and she's just pumping them in one after the other. And so I told the guy, you know, you got to take the caps off your bottles, right? Because it messes the machines up. She didn't miss a beat, just kept pumping the bottles in. And I'm like, man, you're the reason they're broke. Mm -hmm. Because them caps get in there, they start shooting around, you know, and you have the liquid is still in the bottle. Obviously, you didn't take the cap off to empty it. Mm -hmm. Now that's why it's sticky and it's not working. And, oh, you know what they call that? Ignorance. (laughs) Well, yeah, that, yeah. (laughs) But, you know, I've, I've been up there where I have like three bottles left and. One of them has too much fluid in, and it registers, and then they don't have a sink there because some of them don't have sinks. For, mm-hmm. And you're like, all right, I got three bottles taken off caps, and you're distributing it. Like, yeah, you get a third, you get a third. Now we'll fire all three of these through because I'm not walking through with these. I just give them to the person standing behind me. Here you go. There's 40 cents, dude. I ain't got time for this. <laughs> you know, we've been in here for 40 minutes already. This has got to stop. So I'm done. I just want to go home. You should have just stood in line. You go, hey, you know, I got about 10 bucks of bottles here. You give me eight, they're yours. Well, I thought about it. I've thought about it both ways. I thought about when people get upset and they leave or they're, you know, may, they're impatient in line. I'm like, how much you got there? About I'll six bucks. Five bucks for that. Right. Yeah. I'll give you Start four cash with. right now. I don't mind standing there and doing it as long as the machines work. Right. You know, that we got that from the, the pizza joint, dude. Yep. That was the spot because nobody wanted to return bottles. At all. I'll take them. Crazy. I'll take them, dude. Trash bags Right. There's like $14 in that bag. You guys are stupid. (laughs) Because we tell them. We're like, you know where it's money. Like, yeah, it's just a dime. Like, yeah, you just work at Jets. Right. I I didn't know you had a mansion somewhere. (laughs) It's just a dime until you get about 300 of them, you know. Whatever. I'll take them. We were actually talking about the said pizzeria right before you got here. Old stories. Got me thinking about how I'd like to do a thing where we, on the show, if we ever have uh, nothing to talk about, we could bring up my job history. <laughs> That's conversation we for do, days. We could do it a, what, a, a monthly segment that lasts for 10 years. Yeah. We've all had our share. Yeah, I'm not the only one. I just had a little more than some people. That's all. I can say I'm not, let's see. I'm not even in double digits. Ooh. Ooh. You're not even in double digits for jobs in your life? Damn, I had double digits in one year. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah. Before I was 18, I had cleared that landmark. Yep. So See, many. We, we're just well-versed in life. That's what you're lacking. Or you keep getting shitty jobs. I don't know. <laughs> both. It's probably both. More of that, actually, is what I'm guessing. Well, I used to tell people I'm really good at a lot of little things. They're, they're fun <laughs> up to a point, and then when they weren't fun, it's yeah. time to find a new one. Yeah. I was listening to you talk on the other podcast, Weed on the Guy, yeah. about the surveys shop in the mall. You were one of the four people that we all got jobs together. <laughs> yep. I, I was, wasn't I the reason that we quit? Because they accused me of shopping in Marshall's music? Yeah, they accused you of window shopping while working. And then uh, our friend Walt was like, fuck this. And he left with you. And then me and Rob were left working. And by, I'd say, an hour and a half, two hours later, we quit. Because <laughs> Rob was the ride? Yeah, we all quit the same day. We Walt walked out and we were like, oh, fuck, we can't get home. <laughs> Walk back in like, Rob, dude, you gotta, we, we got to go. go. <laughs> uh, all right we're out i remember we walked back to you like wait you're all quitting yeah 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 this didn't work out like we thought it was gonna I remember, <laughs> we went up to the thrift <laughs> shop yeah i was just gonna say <laughs> we were at the value village to get our our work outfits candy stripers <laughs> we went and bought the most like old school candy striper outfits oh my goodness. corduroy pants yeah i remember i don't know who i was with but we were walking through the mall and rob was in there with his clipboard, and it was like a brown pinstripe mm. yeah. with brown corduroys. And he's just like, hey. And you're like, wow, you chose yeah. that, huh? You want to take a survey? Because <laughs> we'd walk in with our... And he was like, no, you don't want to take a survey. Just we had going. T-shirts and jeans, and they were like, you got to dress up. And we're like, oh. Okay. What What are the requirements? Give us some, some <laughs> guidelines <laughs> here. And they're like, a button-up shirt that's nice and nice pants. We're like, oh, we got this. So See you tomorrow. All of us went up there, man. We spent like 10 bucks each on Woo. all that stuff. If that. It's a lot of money for the village. <laughs> we had a ton of outfits that we I, never wore after that. I bought my Cheers tie there. That, that From that, I remember. I still have that thing. Nice. Yep. Yeah, they accused me of window shopping at Marshall Music. I'm like... Yeah, you're not a music guy. Of all... Of who I was there with, <laughs> yeah. Walt, Rob, and John, I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, no, no. Of the four of us, definitely not me. Yep. They got you. Don't so do who that. who was working there? Was it Biondo? Um... You know what? We knew someone that worked there, and I went over there and was talking to him because we had to walk around the mall. Yeah. It wasn't even Marshall Music. It was called the Wurlitzer. Was that what it was? Yeah, That's... it was down on the other end from the t-shirt place yeah. in that corner. Yep. Yeah, because we used to go in there, can I try that guitar? And we'd just go plug it in in the room and just <laughs> make a bunch of noise, <laughs> give it back. No, I don't want this one. Couldn't play guitar, <laughs> you know. Someone we knew worked there because I went over there to talk to them. It was probably Steve. Yeah, I mean, it's a good bet. Yeah, and they were like, you were shopping. I'm like, I don't shop at the mall. I'm only here because you pay me. Mm-hmm. I remember going from the survey place to Sam Goody, from Sam Goody to uh, Suncoast, which was the VHS store yeah. next to Sam Goody. They just, all movies, that was it. Movies and collectibles, that's all they did. Sounds like a busy week for you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how right you are. He was applying for jobs on the job. <laughs> yeah, I was, man. I used to call off interviews. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to call in sick. We, we haven't hired you yet. <laughs> I swear I did that once. It's a company that I fill the propane tanks at right here. It's a local storage and mm. moving company where you can rent trucks. <clears throat> right out of high school, I was getting a job up at Real Estate One as their uh, reception receptionist slash marketer slash gopher computer guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. all, all that stuff. And it was like a real job, yeah. right? Yeah. This is yeah, this five days a week, real job. Better than the mall. I'm an At, adult now. <laughs> man, they set me a meet uh, to go. You had to take a skills test out at their corporate office, and they had the nerve to set it for noon. Who the How fuck dare you? Up that early. I know, right? <laughs> Wait, I got you. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I still remember I called the manager. I'm like, hey, I apologize. I missed the 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 test i really want the job is there a way i can get it rescheduled and they're like oh 
oh, what happened? I was like, well, I, I overslept. And they're like, it was at noon. I'm like, I know. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be that early. I, can we shoot for the afternoon? And, she, and me just being honest, thinking, you know. Yeah, everyone, yeah. And I remember she's like, wait, you overslept? Yeah, yeah, it was early. We're going to go in a different direction. <laughs> <laughs> she was so stunned. She's like, yeah, I set it for Monday at 3. Is that late enough? I'm like, yeah, that should work. Oh, that'll, that'll be I'll, right. I'll be up yeah. by that. <laughs> Shit. Actually, looking I'll, I'll back wake up on that, like, I could just imagine her amazement. Like, wow. Because career, you know, they've been doing yeah, it. Right, right. What you have to do is look at it from like you as her role right, right. Like, like you were on the phone with a 18 year old kid and he's like oh man it was noon oh. i overslept You're like i'm not fucking hiring you or if you come home Click. and your daughter's like ah, i missed my interview it's like it was at two i know overslept and you're like what are you doing they just think back to that did you guys go to the interview together <laughs> you wore tuxedos and i heard about the fart <laughs> <laughs> It's in my mouth. I can taste it. Uh, is what's that? Onions? Onion? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just get out. You guys had conies. Oh man, jobs! I'm telling you, we could go through some job history. Yikes! There's so much. Do you have like all time worst job? Something that just stands out. Yeah, I got this job Survey. one time. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was fun. We it were was. young, you know. It was just because they didn't watch us. All four of us would just walk together, hanging out, yeah, trying to get people to do surveys. Just and they come back in the like, mall. You guys are hitting your quota. You you really need to do better. We're trying. Mm -hmm. People we're just don't want to do surveys. Nobody wants three dollars. <laughs> do you see us? <laughs> They're like, yeah, we see you shopping. Get out, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, I was I got this job at some warehouse. Um, it, right down in Wyandotte, and I remember going in. It was a midnight gig, so it sucked, but I had a job. It was with a buddy, so we went together. Mm. And the guy come by carrying, like, a five-gallon pail of some kind of acid, oh, you know, shit. and he's covered head to toe in this, Protective. you know, hazmat and stuff. And was like, what's going on here? I don't like this. I don't want to be here. It, it, funky smells and chemicals I'm not good with. It was, that was bad news there. I... I was in between jobs, so I went to one of the temp agencies. Those were always fun. <laughs> they sent me to this box place. No. Yeah. I don't remember where it was at. And basically the job was you go there, they print out these orders on these really outdated computers, and you'd go back through the back of the warehouse, which is dirty. These boxes have been sitting here with stuff forever. Find them, mark them, and the high-low drivers will get them and right. bring them out. So the first day I had to go, they, they're like, sound good? And I'm like, well, how much does it pay? Because that's all that matters when you're doing a temp job. Oh, yeah. And it was good good money for me at that age and that time. Right. I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. And they're like, all right. 50 an hour? Are you kidding me? They so <laughs> gave me the assignment. And they're like, just call them. They'll tell you your first day and everything. I'm like, all right, I'll call them. They're like, yeah, we'll have you start tomorrow, 5 a.m. I'm like, what? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. People are up at that time? <laughs> so I'm not going to bed. Last Shit. week I missed a 12 noon interview. <laughs> I just want you to know that. <laughs> so I got up. Mm -hmm. No problem. I went to bed early. Got up because this is, you know, mm -hmm. walk in with a nice shirt, candy striper, and, <laughs> and then realize I'm going to be digging through dirt in the warehouse where they were mm -hmm. like, well, they have to do this stuff in the morning, so it's like 530. Like, just sit here and we'll, we'll come by and get you here shortly. Let's just get this truck on the road. I'm like, all right. Sit in a chair, leans back a little bit, fell asleep. <laughs> I woke up at 11. <laughs> <laughs> I heard my interviews at noon. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's light out. This is not good. You know, it's one of those situations where it's like, what do you do? Just get up and leave. Do you just get up and leave? Or do you just stick around? Or? And I, I get up and I look over and my the person I, I, I learned was going to train me. She's like, have a long night? I'm like, I'm not used to getting up that early. <laughs> she's, like, um, she's like, yeah, well, there really wasn't nothing going on, so I just let you sleep. I'm like, do I still have the job? <laughs> she's like, oh, yeah, you're fine. I'm oh, like, my goodness. Okay. I like this job. <laughs> Did I just get paid for that nap? <laughs> Does that count as training? But I didn't like getting up at five. Eventually, I overslept, never went back, and didn't call him. Oh my goodness! I would have totally just got up and left. You know, like well, at that I was point. going to, and then 
you sit up and you, you kind of like glance around, nothing. Get your bearings. And they're, they're like cubicles. <laughs> and I turn to like get up, and in the next cubicle, she's sitting there like watching me. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's kind of creepy. Uh, How are you doing? Hi. Hi, Karen. <laughs> supposed to be sorry. <laughs> supposed to be training. She goes, Yeah, I'm I'm your trainer. I fell asleep. She's like, Yeah, I you look that. tired, so I just let you sleep. Oh, that's beautiful. It's like, a nice lady. I'm like, oh, okay. What do we do now? <laughs> am, I, am I still working? I need to leave. <laughs> I don't know. Is it lunchtime? <laughs> what, what's what, what's the I deal? haven't had a real job before, and I don't think this is how it's supposed to go. Hey, whatever you do, don't tell my parents, <laughs> please. <laughs> Because I'm never going to hear the end of that shit. The next one I got after that was at this place. I think it was like people mailed in refunds or rebates or something. Okay. So it's like a room the size of a, a normal garage. And they had like six of us in there. And you'd get those plastic white. Uh, like the mail tubs. The mail tubs. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'd set them on the desk, dump them out. There's one on the ground right behind you. And you'd <laughs> open them. And that's, you'd open them. That was the job? You'd. Open them, and I th- you separated it from the envelope, two bins. Oh, my goodness. That's all you did all day. Which Yikes. It's like, all right, so I listen to radio and do stuff, and but it's it's you have, like, little rubber thumb thimbles, you know, to try yeah. and help you, and you're, you're doing it. And I, Paper cuts everywhere. I was there for a week, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to keep doing it. It's decent money, but, man, this is boring. Like, people there are all right, but you pretty much just listen to the radio, so you listen to sports talk. And then the manager was like, I, I need to talk to you. I, I know you've been here a week. You seem to, uh, you know, have a grasp of it, but you got to go faster. You got to hit the quota. I'm like, there's quotas? Like, yeah, you got to open so many envelopes. And I, I'm opening envelopes. <laughs> I mean, they're plural. I'm yeah. filling bins. And then I forget the number they told me. And they told me the number. And I'm like, I'm not near that. And she goes, I know. That's why we're having this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right. And that is why you're here today. So the next day, I, I tried to go. It, it's just getting into a rhythm yeah. and doing it, and I just start daydreaming, mm-hmm. listen to radio. Assembly line work is tough, you know, or any kind of line work like that where you just have your one little task and you just zone out. Oh, yeah. that could be dangerous. What? You got a good one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> give us the, one. Not for the airways. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> I was say, give us a good one before we get out of here. Oh, You've you, only you had some. You didn't so work many... there with us. Well, the window place? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You remember the infamous too. Saturday? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, I want to say I remember the story, but I don't. I remember the story. Details. Oh. I don't remember details. I had a couple Saturdays at that place that were kind of <laughs> iffy. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Probably not your iffy, Ooh. but <laughs> oh. <laughs> good times, dude. This was back in the day. We could get jobs on Monday, quit Tuesday, have a new job Thursday. You know, yeah. excuse me, they were everywhere for our age. And right? Our, I mean, those know, jobs still are. Yeah. Well, they are, but we can't do what we do for a life right. on those jobs. Very so. true. You know, give me 15 an hour. (laughs) I never did uh, fast food. The only time I did fast food, if you can count it, was Baskin Robbins. And I was 15. I ain't fast food. Unless you count the pizzeria. That's not fast food. Pizzerias are a different breed. Exactly. But like Baskin Robbins, for example, on July 1st, when it's 95 degrees outside, it is a bit of a fast food environment. Yeah, there's, but it's not the, the difference. It's not drive through. It's, it's not. not even, it's the grease that you end up smelling like, feeling like, well, coated in. That's the fast food. There was one local pizzeria around here that was kind of a rite of passage for a lot of people that's still open to this day. Uh, you that had a distinct smell on your clothes when you came home, man. That was the one. It was like holy cow. You really had to dedicate one outfit to work, you know, and you yeah. kept it in your car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or you wash it every night if you want to get like that. But, oof. So many jobs. Oh, my goodness. The <laughs> record stores were cool. I enjoyed those jobs. I had fun there. I remember when uh, you worked at that pizzeria and you'd come home like every night with a fresh burn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, those were fun. It was always interesting. I'd wake up, see you, and be like, what do you got? 
You'd be like, oh, dude, I burnt the shit out of my thumb last mm-hmm. night. Had dinner cook at 15. Right. <laughs> had one of those old cast iron stoves. Mm-hmm. Like the, just a beast. <laughs> like on his arm, different finger every night. Sometimes, like, multiple nights in a row, the same finger. Yep. Like he burned the burn. He got to his interview at 12.15 and they hired him. <laughs> <laughs> Head cook. Sold. Well, you did pasta. learn how to fucking make lasagna, and that was great. Yeah. You learn quick when your feet are to the fire. Certain jobs, you know, like you were talking uh, last time about the high low at the airport. Yeah. You, you just learn. Get in there. Good luck. Figure it out. Don't fuck shit up. Right. That was kind of how I was treated when I did Harmony House and the Ticketmaster sales when you could still go buy tickets Mm -hmm. in physical, (laughs) wait in line type shit. It was like that. Here's, get, let's do it. Here you go. Holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing compares to the pizzeria we all worked at, though. No. No. That's got to be number one on the list for (laughs) good times, fun moments, things like that. Great stories. Yeah, great stories. Like, I had a job for seven years, and then it doesn't have the amount of stories that the pizza place had that it was there for, like, a year and a half. Mm-hmm. I would say, too, of all things I've done, that would probably be the one story I'd want to share with people. Oh, yeah. It's the pizzeria stories, you know. There's a lot of people can relate to those, whether you've been a part of that industry or ordered from that industry or, mm-hmm. you know, been a customer or whatever. Or just enjoy good stories. Or just enjoy good <laughs> stories, Absolutely. <laughs> Especially the way we can tell them because we have all these crazy. Remember your yellow car in the flood? Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but you know. it was. It's funny to look. I made more money stations. that night than any other driver. <laughs> I had to get a new car. Right. Worth it. Walking door to door, but you know, we made so many connections there. You know, people that we help with us different things. Oh, yeah. That was a great time. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll get into some stories from that era as we you know move forward that stories me we haven't told yet <laughs> dear wanda right oh oh <laughs> baby <laughs> chapter one the dear wanda letters are awesome we should read those next time if you can if good you luck. can right <laughs> we should get somebody over here to read them like just there's oblivious just like read that out loud it, right? read that out loud right now don't pause don't no. think about it just no questions read it you just read that <laughs> be interesting it won't work for us because we've already read them but right. <laughs> if we can get a stranger or oh, somebody who doesn't great. know it yeah that would be good we should do that please hold all questions to the end of the letter mm-hmm. we should totally do that <laughs> that would be great oh Wanda well you guys got anything else you want to get on before the end of the night here or no I think that's a good spot to wrap it up. Yeah? Yeah. You good? <laughs> cool. <laughs> Once again, Happy New Year, people. 2020. Make sure you write 2020 on everything you fill out, too, just because you don't want to Even if get, it doesn't ask for the date. Yeah. Just write it on there. You don't want to get hosed. Nobody wants to get hosed like that. Uh, you're grinning like you've... <laughs> no, I, I, I feel like I'm going to have to like look up reasons for next show. Like oh, for the 2020? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the reasons for it. Like I said, when we first started, I just saw everybody was sharing the articles, but I didn't click on any of them. It was just like, don't just write 20. You know, That's for, pretty much the cut and dry of the articles. That was it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So i just been like the last four days mentally, write 2020. So if they try to write it on the end, they're going to have to scribble out the first 20. You know, it's going to be obvious then. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of work. Well, <laughs> get up before noon, right? Twenty twenty. <laughs> this is where we're coming to. Didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for none of this. Get me out of here. <laughs> well, great guys, it's been fun. Until next time, obviously. Thanks to all the listeners. Oh yeah. Welcome back. It's 2020. Woo. Write it. All of it. All of it. The whole 2020. Spell it out just to be safe. And next time we'll check back in with some more job stories because that was just funny. We should do that again. <laughs> Why not? Definitely. I mean, you got the most of the arsenal, so. I'll bring some pain. <laughs> <laughs>